Hello everybody, and welcome to Andrew Broussard Watercolors. Today, we're going to be doing a watercolor painting, and then playing with white gouache on top of that. So in front of me, I have an interesting cut of paper. This is the same Stonehenge Aqua that I usually use, but I took my large sheet, and I folded it like you would fold a letter to put it in an envelope, and I tore it in thirds in the um, direction of the uh, 30 inches. So that would give me a 10 inch strip, a 10 inch strip, and another 10 inch strip. Then from there, so I kind of eyeballed it. I didn't really have to measure it because I knew from then I could take my 10 inch strip, which would be 20 inches long, fold that in half and tear that and I would have a 10 by 10. Um, the first 10 inch strip wouldn't be perfect, but the other one would be pretty right on the money, so I could have that as my 10 inch side, and the other one 10 inches, but then mark it off to fit within an eight by 10 mat. So um, essentially this fold that I had done, and the tear that I had done was a, um, to get me six pieces of paper from the large sheet. Anywho, um, if you guys would ever like me to make a video about tearing the paper and the different measurements you can get out of it, excuse me, let me know. Um, you know, of course, as per usual, please, you know, like, subscribe, follow, comment um, below. I have that Patreon account that I would love for you to consider supporting me on. And if you don't want to or are unable to, I completely understand. Just liking and subscribing on YouTube really helps this channel grow. And I love hearing the feedback from everybody. So that's some raw sienna in this wet and wet. I'm gonna put together a pretty quick imaginary scene. It'll probably be influenced by the Herman Herzog painting um, pen and ink sketch that we had done previously. I'm gonna grab some um, alizarin. But my main goal is, the main experiment is kind of playing with gouache over the watercolor paper uh, painting. And we've done that in the past to highlight trees and whatnot, but a few ideas popped into my mind in regards to um, some different aspects. And I'll talk about that when we get to the end. So let's see alizarin. I'll even grab some light red oxide and put that in the sky. Stretch out our paper. I use the back end because my you know, fingers could have oil on them and, and smear it. Remember the bottom edge of the painting is going to be here, but I'm just extending it lower. And I'm going to go for a dark, my light red and ultramarine. Put in a far distant horizon. I'm gonna do an S-shaped composition like that most recent painting we've looked at. So S-shape being that the path is leading the eye back in this fashion. Grab a little bit of Payne's Gray on here. Mix it with Alizarin Crimson. This is a mix from um, Ron Ranson for Stormier Clouds. Feed those in.
I'm going to bring that up even though my cutoff line is going to be about there. All right. So, at this point, let me grab some burnt sienna. Bring these land masses closer, so kind of warming up these spots. I think I put the burnt sienna a little too high up right there, um, meaning that the more distant objects are going to be too warm. So let me grab some Payne's Gray and kind of put that over that. That might be way too much Payne's Gray, but that will help um, give us the dark effect, whether we're being backlit coming forward. Texture here. Darken this edge. Yeah, I took a big old glob of fresh Payne's Gray, so I'm just making use of it. And we'll put a boat along here as in the Herman Herzog. So I'm just putting in a reflection now. All that noise in the background is Hammy climbing all over boxes and stuff. Hammy, what you doing, buddy? Now, um, I'm gonna stop it right here with the wet and wet. And I'm thinking that this is now when I want to start playing around with the um, the gouache. I'm going to use black gouache and white gouache in order to kind of put in my forms. And the main thing that I was thinking about was like, we have the white of the paper and I could have the white of the gouache and can I get the white of the gouache to make an object appear closer while white of the paper will push objects back? I'm not quite sure if that makes sense, but we'll experiment with it. I'm looking for my black gouache, which we used just a day or two ago. Let me pause for a second so I'm not looking for that. All right. I have the white gouache and I have the black gouache. And I was thinking, you know, before even drying off, let's play with a wash of uh, gouache over it. So if you don't have white uh, paint, I, I recommend getting it to experiment with. Um, you don't have to get all the different colors. This is um, Da Vinci brand uh, white titanium and the black is the Royal Talons. Um, I got that off of uh, Blick.com. I got both of them off of there. So I use a separate vessel for these. So this is white not making too much of a difference but let's follow a path with it and, and see how it like mellows things out and blends things together then we'll do a dry off and we'll look at it whenever it's dry you can definitely see more of an influence there It's almost as if it kind of assists the softening. It's interesting. So 
So once again, this is white gouache in a watery mix being applied over a wet and wet watercolor. This is almost straight from the tube. Let me pour out some more. And this is a squirrel mop. I'm using uh, the Paul Rubens I got off of Amazon. Okay, this is more pure from the tube. I'm trying to keep out brush marks. But down here in the water, I really want it. I want kind of that dry brush effect. And that was one thing I was thinking about is how we can get an application of white up on top to push back, application of white down here to push forward. And while we're wet and wet, poured out this black wash. Let's use that to create some shapes. Now, what I have in mind is referencing the Herman Herzog sketch, and I mentioned that at the beginning. I don't know if it had a name to it. It was kind of just referred to as coastal landscape. So if you know the name of that one, let me know. But there was boats that were on the land and they had their masts come up. And this is over a wet and wet watercolor. And I'm kind of just making a little bit more gestural I could switch to a rigger. I might have to for the thin lines. Yeah, let's do that. So this is a number one silver black velvet. Ooh, I applied too much pressure there. That is being affected by the wet and wet. So let's move to another spot. Use it on the side for a textured effect. Land mass. And the one I was referencing had a boat in this range as well. Let's kind of darken that. Bring that back here. And then we'll do a dry off. Okay, so I'm gonna pause the painting video and I'm going to now play around with that. All right, so, so far I'm quite pleased with the effects that we're getting from the gouache over the watercolor. I'm gonna pull out the watercolor palette again and I'm gonna grab kind of a distant gray uh, light red oxide ultramarine and in the original painting that I'm kind of just slightly referencing at this point there was the far horizon and in that far horizon get a little bit of shapes and there was little buildings and stuff. 
So this is just using a watery mix, a grade wash of um, light red oxide and ultramarine. In fact, I'm going to bring this grade out a little bit down. And then pulling a trick from James Fletcher Watson for slightly closer objects, warming that mix up with burnt sienna. And I apologize that I have that off camera. I'm gonna bring these, just dry brush a little bit over here of that same amount. I'm gonna pause for a second, do another dry off, and then we'll do some more little uh, figures and stuff like that in this. All right, now I was looking at the sky and the sky is very kind of Turner-esque, but I figured we should now kind of mix in. Sorry, I gotta pause for a second. Okay, I figured mix in some um, watercolor into this uh, gouache and play around with washes with that. So this is lemon yellow being mixed in. Might be a little too vibrant, but I'm gonna grab some light red oxide. It's kind of changing the whole feel of this, but that's the whole point of experimenting, see if we like it or not and see what point we had fun, and what point we should have stopped. Here's some alizarin crimson into that mix. I feel like we could bring these colors down below. And you can see how it really affects the opacity of it. Give some of this on the horizon. Some of the dark, the black. Now I'm gonna kind of scrub around a little bit. Kind of blend things together. Try to very simply push away brush strokes. hard edges. All right, so just kind of playing around, seeing if that's something that's a viable option. I'm gonna grab a little bit of sap green. So it's kind of going back and forth between the, the gouache mixes and um, the watercolor. I'm just gonna bring this sap green here just to kind of cover out those areas so it's not throwing me off, even though that would be covered by a mat. Green into those areas. Grab a little bit of Payne's Gray, just to kind of darken up this background horizon. And then I'm gonna come back in and model some more of these uh, boat shapes. Okay, another quick pause for a dry off. All right, so that gave us some interesting results. I'm gonna now try to um, pull away from some of the ethereal feel of things. So that, that does affect the atmospheric quality of it, but I do want to kind of see how it is sketching 
on top with the gouache. Seeing if very quick motions and movements can give the illusion of the people and the boats being worked on. Hope I even line that up. Let me do a second. Um, and the reference from memory was a guy with a pole. You can add a little bullet back in here. See the people on that boat. Smaller boats. These are we'll have them as bigger boats. We'll use the side for a textural effect. Part of me wants to mix some earth tones into this um, the gouache and try to get the brownish colors for some of the boats, but I'm thinking that I might just let that be. Or not. Here's a little bit of Light red oxide. We'll bring its shadow. We have people around. That. I think at this point, I'm just gonna take the rigger and put some of those birds that you'll see in a port. And I'll just kind of do the stereotypical V shape. And at this point, let's uh, pause, dry it, and then we'll uh, put a mat over it and see what it looks like. All right, so here's the final results. Um, and this is an eight by 10 opening, the mat. So the tearing of the paper experiment worked out and that's something I'll expand upon. Um, and I can do a video about how to easily tear paper for y'all. Um, the going back and forth between gouache and watercolor was pretty fun. Taking that squirrel mop mixing the white gouache with the watercolor and kind of letting it spread out. I liked 
doing that. I don't usually um, tinker around with skies after the initial painting, like the initial application of watercolor. So that was fun. That's something I'd want to try to do again in the future. This dry brush of the gouache. Um, I'm curious how it would do. Like I, I wouldn't want to roll it up and um, do anything like that because it could potentially crack because it's sitting on top of the paper. So if you ever did something like this, you just want to be more careful with it. Um, you know, there is warnings about that with gouache, but nobody really ever says how thick and when that starts to happen. So that's something to um, keep in mind, bear in mind. Um, but yeah, so I mean, if you have a standard watercolor palette, adding a tube of white and a tube of black might be something that you'd want to do. I mean, um, it really does open up a whole new uh, area to your palette and your painting experience. So once again, I hope you enjoyed. Uh, please like, subscribe, follow. Um, and I'll be back with more videos. Y'all enjoy. Have a great day.